Welcome to the new episode of Home Visit with Tyler Siski and the Associates. Join with me today, the Director of Player Personnel for the University of Oklahoma, J.R. Sandlin. J.R., how are we doing today? Tyler, what's going on? How are we doing? Man, you know, I only got one phone call from you this morning, so I was feeling a little low. You know, you usually keep my spirits up every day by calling me. I mean, it's been a daily thing. It definitely has. It's been a daily thing. So I, it, it, you I know, feel my, like uh, when, you, when you started quick recruiting, I mean, I feel like we've just been right there from the birth, from the get go. And, and we're seeing this little toddler grow up gradually. <laughs> it's, it's been a, it's been a journey and you have been there from the start with this is your second school. So we're excited yes. about that. But through popular demand, you have you have come requested to be interviewed on this podcast. Did you know that? How about that? No, I did not know that. Popular demand. Yeah. Popular demand. We got a lot of DPPs and a lot of coaches that wanted me to get you on here. Let's go. Let's go to war. All right, let's go to war. All right, before we get started, you know, the people have to know that uh, I talk to you on a daily basis, and I have never seen you without a Peter Millar shirt on. So how many Peter Millar shirts do you own? Well, today, for you, I just busted out the six. This is a brand new one that I have not worn until today. It actually came in the mail last Friday, but uh, this would be the sixth one. And and really, I mean, I just kind of rotate them all through. Just in my mind, I like just having a uniform for work. So okay, there's your quarter zip. You got your little decent shirt. You got your slacks. Uh, and, and, and you don't have to plan for it. You know exactly what you're going to wear. It's even here in the locker room. So if you need something right away, uh, and then people give you the hard time, well, it's long sleeves. You're inside most of the time. You're in, and, and they keep it freezing. I mean, it's always cold, so you're always in a jacket. So yeah. why not just go with it and keep it consistent? Yeah, it's going to be hot this week, though, so you're going to get tested this week. It's going to sure, be in the 90s. you're still inside. You're still inside. It's fair enough. Fair and enough. I always look at it as it's just one less thing to plan for. You're like, hey, I already know the outfit. Let's go. You're done. And you don't have to worry about it. Fair enough. All right, so we're going to start with this. Uh, one thing, I know you have a uh, – you, you should probably do an NIL uh, – uh, seminar with all these kids about branding because you're really good at it, obviously. Um, one thing that you did is recruiting one-on-one that you've done on Twitter and through social yep. media and everything. So how, how did recruiting one-on-one start? Where did you get the idea? And then were you kind of surprised how fast it took off? Um, you know, like, I guess recruiting one-on-one really started. I'd have to think about it because – you know, the whole concept came from my time when I was at Oxford High School. So you know, I played football at UCF. And after I graduated from UCF, I went to Oxford High School in 09. And while I was there, I started taking all the kids film. And so when I was at UCF, I got hurt. And then I blew out my knee. So I was still medical and I was working in the recruiting office. And I was learning everything there was in recruiting. Well, when I got to the high school, you just flip it. If you're recruiting something, you just flip it on the side and promote it. So you turned all the recruiting into promotion. And when I got to Oxford, it's basically taking the clips. I knew exactly what the kids film needed to right. be. I knew, hey, this is information that's going to be sold to a coach and there's going to be more inclined to look at this information, especially with the wording of emails, maybe with the subject matter. Uh, and, you know, we're talking about Twitter, Twitter was just getting started in 09. I remember having mine in maybe 08, whatever it was. Um, I remember still taking, because I thought this was one of the better things, uh, because you never could always trust uh, the emails. But what I did was do a fact sheet, and it was literally a fax. And I did it black and white and faxed it because I knew at the time that those fax machines, now I don't know if it's the case now, uh, probably not, but the fax machines literally would go right Whatever you fax the recruiting coordinator or position coach, they went right to the boxes because that fax machine sat right there in the where the boxes were for all the coaches, and they would get it right away. So I remember just putting stuff like their name, their height, the weight, the the school, some some uh, some bullet points, and some verified times and stuff like that. But really, it took all from from my time at at Oxford because I've always noticed where this is a really uncharted waters for a lot of kids, a lot of families, a lot of people, uh, and they don't know what they don't know. So I just started one day. I don't remember what year it was. Uh, I think I started doing it gradually. And when I had an idea or if I saw something out on the road or if I saw or if I had a question, someone asked me a question, I was like, well, someone else needs to know this. And I was like, how else can we 
take what we know and pay it forward. I think the greatest gift in life is obviously taking the gift you have and the information you have and sharing it and paying it forward to help as many people as you can. Why would you not? If you don't, you just squander what you have and that helps who? No one. So that's ultimately where the idea and concept came from. Um, I've gradually just as as things come up, I think about it and I just send it out. Hashtag recruiting one on one. Never expected it to take off like it did at all. I mean, I yeah. just never did. Um, and I think it really took off even more during that whole COVID COVID period because there had to be a new way of marketing and promoting you when you couldn't go see these places and they couldn't see you live. So uh, and, and understanding the promotion and the marketing aspect of it is really helpful to the kid because it goes back to I always assume you don't know what you don't know. And obviously, as a coach, you ultimately are what a teacher. So you're constantly just teaching and everything now on the uh, on the recruiting or the recruiting 101 or on the Twitter is really based off the timeline of what the recruiting calendar because there's only so many things you can do and the recruiting calendar is the set calendar and each time period has its own set of expectations and what coaches can do or what coaches are looking for and uh, as we know camps coming up so then the whole idea of the messages going out would be towards hey you're going to camp this is what coaches are looking for make sure you're Make make sure you're demonstrating these skills, or or go show and introduce yourself. Or uh, it's a lot of practical stuff. I feel like that just people need to know, and it's just constantly reeducate, reeducate, reeducate. Um, you know, you, you're Alabama. I was there. I remember this, and this and this is part of the model of it too. I remember in '09, we had just won the national championship. A kid came up and said, "I did not know that y'all won all these other national championships." And you're like. You know, I'm from Tuscaloosa, and you're telling me you you didn't know about the other 12? <laughs> like, so then it hit me right away that people don't know what they don't know. And you can't ever assume that they know. And this was a kid, I want to say, from Alabama or Georgia. You're right there in the five-hour radius. You're in the footprint. And you didn't know this? So then it just dawned on me, as you continue to tweet or continue to send the message out, you have to do it over and over and over and over. You have to know that they know that they know that they know that they know. And you then have to quiz them and test them and even bring it back up. Because, again, for me to assume that a kid knows or a family knows or where you are in the process, I mean, shame on me. Yeah, that's the thing. I I think you hit the nail on the head. You know, a lot of times as coaches, you know, we go through the process every single year and it just restarts. We play the same as Groundhog Day. We play the same game over and over and over again. But each year is somebody that's completely new to the game. And so sometimes some of the really easy things you, you take for granted and think they should know things and they don't. And, uh, you know, I get reminded every day when <clears throat> I got reminded actually yesterday when I was so excited and telling my kids about uh, the new Top Gun movie that's about to come out. I'm all fired up and yeah. they have no idea how big of a movie it was the first time. So um, just you got to you got to remind, you know, remind yourself that, uh, like you said, they don't know what they don't know. So you got to help them they out They don't there. know what they don't know. And I think the biggest question you get all the time is, well, how do I get the process started? And it kind of goes back, like you said, marketing, promoting. Well, if you are selling a product, which is your play and, and your skills and drills, and you're not, and if you're selling it right there in your neighborhood and you're not getting bites, then you need to recheck on your methods and processes of how you're selling it. Because let's just take it to marketing and sales. If I'm trying to sell a product in my neighborhood and no one's buying, I probably can't go over to the cross the street neighborhood. I probably right. can't go into Texas. Uh, so I kind of look at it where I always tell kids, take your five hour radius because that's driving distance in schools. Like when I was at JSU, you're driving anyway. Uh, you're not flying all over the country to, to go recruit. But you're talking about there's there's so many more schools that outside the FBS that have to use that recruiting footprint, which is a five hour radius. Um, or seven, however you want to describe it, uh, as the uh, as a footprint. And if you as a prospect aren't sending it out to every school that offers football, FBS, FCS, Division II, three NAI, JUCO, it doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, what are you trying to do? You're trying to get offers. And the, I look at it like fishing. The more bait you throw out there, the better the bite. And no doubt. But if you're not sending it out there, I'm like, you have to still hook the line. You got to throw it out there. That's your job. And that's the, and either you're willing to do it or you won't do it. And it's one or the other. All right. You brought it up a minute ago that you, you played at UCF, played tight end at UCF, was a scholarship tight end there. What was the hardest you ever got hit in college? Do you remember like one the time hardest. that you got the hardest you ever got hit in college? Ooh, the hardest. 
I'll tell you this, like the hardest hits I've ever taken is off a tube in the water. <laughs> straight on the lakes yeah. like you get some crazies behind the boat and they and they just toss shell ass and i'm like that's the worst hits i can ever remember i think some of the I, if i can remember right there was a practice session or something and you know i'm playing tight end and we run a pivot route across the middle it's just a dump you know it's just a little sit hope the hope yeah. the linebacker split and you're going to get ta- you're going to get tackled it's just for a first down i think those are some of the hardest hits you get because you're the standing dummy and old johnny gets to come run in full force to light you up to see if you're going to fumble it or not but hardest hits ever definitely off the water tube in the in the water on the lakes hey i just ride the boat now that's I'm like, I'm good. That's a good idea. I'm, like y'all taught me my lesson. I'll never. I'm good. No more skiing. No more inner tubing. We're good. I think I got stroked one time uh, the first, when you know zone blitz wasn't around a hundred years before. You know when we were playing, and I I, I ran a slant into a, in a zone dropper one time, and that that ruined my day. So that was that sucked. Getting hit by I got hit by a defensive lineman on a slant. That was no no bueno for my body type. I can promise you mm-hmm. that. All right, how many – question. We, you know, we talked about this, I guess this was two weeks ago. We were talking about coaches' burnout and the crazy amount of time that coaches are spending working. All right, so this is the off season. It's May. It's spring recruiting. How many hours did you work last week? How many hours did I work last week? Last week. I mean, honestly, right now, I'm getting here 7 at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, and I'm not leaving till dark. Well, 9, 9.30 – Sometimes getting at the place at ten o'clock. Um, so thirteen because, you know, to fourteen so hours good. a day, easy. And I don't leave. I mean, I eat lunch here. So I mean, all my meals will be here. I mean, during the week, it's 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 difficult to even leave because there's so much work that has to be done. And it's and people are always like, well, how what, what are you actually having to do? Well, every time you identify a new name, you have to start the process on every one of those individuals. Yeah. If you identify, evaluate, marketing, customer service, you got to do the whole process of recruiting but so much of identifying has have you watched the film have you got the transcript what do we know character evaluations what type of reference do we have Uh, and and then you have to follow through follow through follow up follow through follow up follow through on every of them uh and then as you continue to get more names and as coaches are on the road right now uh then then we have our meetings we got to prep for and you have to cross check all those guys and see where they end up falling on the board because at the end people don't get they're like oh you're just recruiting one class one class no you better be recruiting three classes at one time yeah and being really thorough in evaluating all that because you have to be ahead of the game and you have to you better have an eval on anybody that has a power five offer. I mean, you and better know what's going on. You brought up a good point. I think it's 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 good for the fans to understand this because you, you're similar to me. We've been at all levels from FCS all the way up to the elite power five schools. And the higher level you get when you're in your recruiting, really recruiting uh, three classes, you know, and, you know, when you're in group of five, you're recruiting the class you're in and maybe a couple of guys in the next class, right? But when you get up there right. and you're recruiting three classes, what people don't understand is there's actually more work goes into those younger kids because you can't make a mistake. And, and that's where all the mistakes happen uh, with those younger kids. And you got to be really sure um, because I mean, that's you're a, talking about that's a if he commitment. just finished freshman ball, what is he, 14, 15 years old? You're not going to say he can't play football. No, there we know that the male, just the male doesn't stop growing until 21 years old. And, and just because this might have been Johnny's first year of playing football, you can't say he can't play yet. You have to watch and see how he develops and how he grows and matures. I've seen so many times, I know you have too, Tyler, seen a kid who weighs 150 pounds, soaking wet, freshman year. He ends up being 225 senior year. Like, where did this guy come from? Yeah. All this new mass. I'm like, well, the kid's still growing. You don't yeah. know where he is in his process. And you can't be so quick to say, oh, he can't play ball. No, I think a lot of the times initially you're just looking for natural athletic movements. I know, I know when you worked the camps at Alabama, when I worked the camps at Alabama, a lot of the eighth grade, eight, you know, the seventh and eighth grade, we'd, <laughs> we'd write down some of the names because you're like, hey, this kid could have something one day. He has some natural athletic ability. He can move. He has great burst, acceleration, change of direction, balance, and body control. I mean, I we remember could go Brian all, Robinson. We could, hey, no doubt. He came to the door looking like Herschel Walker. So that, that one was pretty easy. <laughs> That one's easy. He was right there in Tuscaloosa, so that yeah. made it easy for you. Looked like Herschel Walker. I was like, I thought I was like, who is this kid? And why do I not know about him? Well, because he's he's fourteen, coach. Excuse me, he's fourteen years old. 
I was like, okay, there's, there's, they, they, sometimes they grow a little bit early too. That was like, holy smokes. All yeah, right. That's so tough too, because think about that. Like what you just said, they grow early. I always remember like little league baseball. You see those kids, you know, when you're watching little league baseball. On, oh yeah. On I'm TV coaching it right now. I'm in a unique you know age. I mean? I'm 14 and you years. got that 11, 12, 13 year old group. And, and some of them already got the facial hair and they're like, oh, this is the next Nolan Ryan. Well, is it? I mean, he's, right. he might be already fully grown. You don't know that. I, I tell mean, people and, all the and time. And then they, they don't realize it's all the all the tanner stages that you go through in development. And that's, you know, you going through the whole puberty process. I'm like, that's all the tanner stages of development. And some of these kids go through it way quicker than the, some, some of the other ones. I tell people all the time, you know, when I was at St. Paul's and we quote unquote recruited, um, and everybody's like, oh, well, yeah, you know, you had A.J. McCarron, you had Mark Barron, all this. I was like, yeah, but what about Aaron Lerner? You remember him? And they're like, who? I said, exactly. <laughs> I said because in sixth grade he was five foot eleven, two hundred and ten pounds, and the baddest offensive lineman in the city of Mobile. And the day he graduated, he was five foot eleven, two hundred and five pounds, <laughs> and just on the team. Um, you know, they're just you, you can't ever tell. All right, I got a question for you. We'll switch gears a little bit. If you could change any NCAA rule, if the good Lord came down and said, "Jr., you can change any rule that you want to change," what are you changing? Mm, there's so many. <laughs> there's so many. Well, there's so many of it's just not practical. It's just not practical. Some of the things are just not practical, and they don't don't make sense. And and I think a lot of times you you have individuals making some of these aren't adding the relational aspect, or or they might not have any experience in the actual sport, and that's all sports. Um, so I mean, it, it's really difficult. I would I would also say this. I personally. In 13 years of doing this, I've never seen an NCAA member come visit any institution I've been a part of, and that's Alabama, Notre Dame, Tennessee, JSU, Oklahoma, and, and actually listen to the people that are doing it. I would actually say it's very hard to make decisions and to, uh, I don't know, let's, how do I want to say this, make decisions and make protocols and procedures for people when you don't see them. And you don't listen to them. And I'm not saying they don't, but I haven't seen any in 13 years. And I'm just saying, like, you know, know my my favorite part of that is is you're looking for them to show up for the last 13 years. And in my experience, when they show up, my ass goes running the other direction. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, how do you how do you make how do you actually govern correctly when you don't take the time to see and listen to the people that you govern? I mean, if a politician did that, they're not getting many votes. No. But it go, going back to your question, I think probably one of the ones, one of the ones that probably doesn't make the most sense is, um, that, so you're signing kids now in February, and excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, you you, you did you still sign, them, but the January, and you only have. You, excuse me, that's December time, that December yeah, okay. date, and the contact period starts what the end of. November, where you get to do the in-home visits. Yeah, about and two stuff, and a half, three weeks. To actually go into the home and actually, let's just say this, be off campus, your university campus, to have any type of interaction with the family and Johnny. And then you're going to sign them, even though you probably, like we mentioned, you've been recruiting three classes, if you're doing it right, for a while. Um, and it's like, that just doesn't make sense because you you have, and, and then you have only two weeks Two weeks yeah, have to see everybody off campus interaction. And then you can't do, you can't see the kid multiple days in that week. You get one hit per week. Yep. I'm like, that logistically is not practical enough because, I mean, if you're at the topper at some of these programs, you already know who you're recruiting. And a lot of the other programs have to wait to see who it's a trickle down effect. We all know that. Um, to find out if, well, if he's going here, now we got to look at this part of the board and whatnot like that. But if you probably had more contact period with some of them, um, well, or see, if that's it was logistically I'm, I'm different, with you. I've always, I've always thought they might've had an earlier signing period. You know, someone used to argue that maybe they should have an earlier signing period. I'm like, for some of those programs, they were already finished yeah. going into the fall. So I'm, with and I'm like, you why them. would you not? They already know. And then the kids would feel better about it because he's already signed. So there's your insurance policy. If something did happen, in the fall, like you got hurt, 
Right. So I don't know. To me, that just that didn't ever, that that one hasn't really ever made sense. Yeah. So you know, they were talking about. We talked a little bit about it last week about you know they're talking about redoing the recruiting calendar again. And and for me, I think they take away the um, January contact period in January. They just get rid of the January signing day. Okay. Have a December signing day if that's what you want to do. That's fine. But they need to take that contact period, and they need to move that until the spring till now. Because your decisions are going to be made. And so everybody's worried about the bump rules and tamper, you know, all that stuff with these underage kids. Well, I mean, I'm just going to let you know uh, what I mean, even most group of five schools are damn near done recruiting. You know, once December gets here, I forgot the stat or whatever it is. I probably should have looked it up because I wasn't planning on talking about it. But if you don't want people to bump these underclassmen in the in January, then don't have it make it an evaluation period. So basically swap the spring and January. And so coaches, it's an evaluation period. So if you want to go by and see coaches or whatever you want to do, that's fine. Or make it dead. It doesn't matter. But just there's there's very little uh, work going on in the current class mode uh, with coaches in the January period. Most of it, even in the group of five schools, most of it's unless you're a new staff. Now, that's a little bit different, right? right. But besides that, it, I mean, if, you've, if you're there for your second year, you're not recruiting in January. You're going and seeing the, the next year kids, the juniors, the, the underclassmen, right. and seeing those coaches and going ahead and getting a head start. Uh, again, I do see the issues with the, you know, just being fair with new staffs. You know, you take Rich Rod, for example, you know, it's new to Jacksonville State. When they get there, if they don't hire you until late before signing day, then you got to use January to kind of make up and catch up what you don't have. Um, the same thing in your guys' case at Oklahoma, right? You just got there. Um, what do you need to go get? You know, I don't know, but I think now we'll talk about it later on the podcast, but talking about all the new rules going to getting rid of the, um, you know, 25 initials and things that you're looking at. I think there's some things you can look at to kind of, and it helps coaches out to alleviate the, the workload, uh, when it goes there. All right, JR, right, best tradition just... in college football. What do you got? Best tradition. Best tradition in college football. Man, that's a, that's a tough one. I mean, I'm still getting to experience a lot of them. I'm really looking forward to the Red River rivalry this year. I've heard that one's insane and an incredible environment, so I'm really looking forward to that one. Yep. Um, best one in college football. I don't know. What do you, give me yours. What do you think? Let me let me think about it because I have. I'm still thinking about this one. I mean, there's so many out there. I, you know, I think experiencing the Army Navy game would be really oh, fun. Yeah, that's up there. I I've mean, never been there. I think that. I, I've heard unbelievable things. You know, when I was at JSU the last eight years, people always bragged and boast about the Montana, Montana State. I'm like, really? And they're like, oh, yeah, you need to experience that. So to me, I got to experience you know, Montana, but it wasn't a fun, it wasn't a fun trip. You, I feel like the, you know, the best tradition, is it really going to be the best tradition or the best experience for you? So yeah. I almost would say, what are the better experiences out there of college football? We would all say a fourth and short. Just in general, I remember I can I can remember my time at Notre Dame. We were playing Michigan, um, and it was fourth and short, and it was the loudest I've ever heard a stadium. It was in the big house. I remember talking to someone literally maybe this close, and they, <laughs> you know, just yeah, you could not hear, hear it. It was unbelievable. Uh, man, Alabama LSU uh, the year I think we played Notre Dame for the national championship. Uh, we were playing in LSU. I think TJ yelled and scored a touchdown. That yep. was an experience. But man, traditions. I'd probably go There's mine. So many. Probably, I'd probably say the coolest thing I've ever experienced personally, like just cool, was uh, Virginia Tech Inner Sandman. I've got to do that twice. That Inner was, Sandman. dude, that was like everything that you think it's going to be. It was, yeah. I, I remember we, we did it early, early on in my career, like in 2001. We went up there. And then I went back with Freeze in, this would have been 11 maybe, when we were at Arkansas State. And <laughs> I remember Freeze goes, Freeze did adjust, this is the most Freeze thing ever, by the way. He adjusted his pregame routine to where he could go out and like instead of like when he talks to the team and stuff, he, he did it a little bit yeah. earlier so he could go out and see the inner Sandman. So he, he wanted to see it too. So he was standing in the tunnel. Did he really? Yeah. Freeze also, by the way, Freeze also, um, since we got a lot of Oxford people on here, Freeze also adjusted our Friday travel to FIU one year. Um, so we would get there early enough to see the Auburn Alabama game. He wanted to get no there way. in time so he could watch the Auburn Alabama game at the hotel on the TV. So we, okay, we left like hell early. 
you know, I know we were talking about traditions, but let, here, let me just give you a few experiences because these will be really good. So I would say this past past year, JSU, FSU, Hail Mary uh, to win. We talked that about that on here. was insane. I'm like, I'm standing on the sideline, right? And it happens. And we went. I mean, like, he catches the ball. I'm like, we win. We won. And everyone went nuts. And you, you didn't expect that. No one expected no. That's one of those sporting that was a, that doesn't that one, happen. Nobody expected I was watching it live. I woke up everybody in the house because I couldn't believe what happened. One, because they stayed in base defense. Two, they it's just like they were – it's like the guy, like, tagged him like it was a flag football game or something, and he just kept running. I yeah. was like, why did you not tackle the guy? It was almost like he thought the clock – I don't know what happened. It was just – it was a, a, you know, the perfect storm. But, like, there was so many then, things that one thing could have changed right there and it wouldn't have, that play wouldn't have happened. But then it's like, I mean, you still have to play the game. You still have to make the play. I, I'll tell you this one, too. This one was good. Uh, Notre Dame, Stanford, Stanford Stadium, 2013. I believe that was you. Yeah, it's 2013. This was when Auburn ran the kickback on Alabama. Uh, you know, we don't we don't talk about that on this podcast. I'm just okay. Well, I'm just going to tell you this: they stopped the game. I remember in the overhead. If you could please direct your attention to the board, and you're like, no, Dude, we, wow. that's a. Uh, that's like a four letter word. We don't we don't talk about those things. I got I got uh, PTSD from that from that event. That was insane. Uh, yeah, that was, I, I, I mean, but uh, just, just forget the for, forget. I was that having part. a good day, Jr. How, the, I was having the a fact great day. that they showed that. No, seriously, the fact that they showed that at Stanford for people to watch. They stopped the game to watch that. Mm. That was pretty crazy. Mm. Like you, like mm. I, I'm I'm having I'm having like heart palpitations right now. It gets my blood hey, okay. pressure going. Your I need favorite to take blood pressure game. medication. Your favorite bowl game, because I'll tell you this one: the Pinstripe Bowl might have been my all-time favorite. No, no, yo, you're in New York, New York during Christmas, and on Christmas Day and Christmas Eve, that was a great experience. That, but I mean, that's really something because you don't. Have, if you had a wife and kids, it wouldn't be a great experience because your wife would be on your ass okay, and not having enough. toys and stuff. I, I, I thank goodness. <laughs> I'm gonna knock on wood. Thank, thank goodness. <laughs> I don't have to worry about anymore. But I never had to deal with the whole Christmas. Uh, we did have to leave Christmas night one time, I think, to go to the Sugar Bowl. But really, um, I had to work on Christmas. That was fun. Watch watch practice film. But I never had to like. I was always there Christmas morning. That was always a deal. I was like, you know, these Hawaii bowl games. You know, they they're like, man, that'd be mm-hmm. so awesome. But then you think like, hey, yeah. hey, Hawaii bowl. Let's go UCF. We played in that. How awesome was that, by the way? Forty eight, forty nine. We lost to Nevada double overtime. Do you really even care about losing a bowl game though? If it doesn't mean anything. A week out in Hawaii was incredible. Yeah, that's the thing and people don't realize. About, it's like who really get nobody remembers the bowl games unless they actually mean something. Like nobody, I mean, I don't even hardly remember like anything about bowl games. I remember like bits and pieces of them. But as far as that, I can go back, I can remember the Ole Miss Vandy game from 2013. I can tell you everything that happened in that game, but I can't remember. I don't remember 2012. I can't remember anything that happened in the bowl game that we played against Pitt besides we ran the same play 17 times and we ran power for about 74 yards right over Aaron Donald. That's the only two things I remember about that game, and we won. Mm. So, but anyway. All right, you got one food to eat for the rest of your life. One. Ooh, one. What you what you roll? I mean, with? I'm a sweet I'm a sweet tooth guy. Can it just too. can it just be some type of baked sure. good? Can we have some brownies? Can we have an American Cookie and Company? You get one cake. What, I mean, yeah, you can have one. What are you going with? God, Whatever. it's not a healthy choice by any means. Nobody cares. It's one food. Someone should someone should be like, uh, man, one. I don't know. I would probably. I'm a big barbecue fan. Love me some okay some. Some barbecue. You find some barbecue. All right, so we're talking about barbecue right. pork. You can't say barbecue and say like that. That you well, got, yeah, I was, that if I was ribs, I would have told you ribs. I mean, you yeah, if, ribs. I was, if it was ribs, it's shredded pork. It's shredded okay. pork, Boston butt, shredded. And it's all about how they cut it. They can cut it really fine and this do a is really true. good job. And, and you have some really good sauce because there's some sauces. I'm like, mm, I'm not crazy about the thicker sauce. I mean, you remember your time in Tuscaloosa. Uh, uh, Archibalds is unbelievable. They have some really good sauce. Good I like that one. Totally different sauce in Dreamland. Uh, more the vinegar base. But if you can find the right sauce with some barbecue, like I have argued that I would love to just eat barbecue. Like you give me some shredded pork and some barbecue sauce, let's go. Let's go to war. I'm, I'm put- But – I could kill some crawfish. 
Yeah, but uh, yeah. I can kill some crawfish. I was debating on this. I think I go Reese cups. I just eat Reese cups. <laughs> we went straight candy. Okay, yeah. brownies. Yeah. Give me br- They better be done right. We better have some brownies. No icing on them. No icing. Summertime, put your Reese cups in the freezer, and then it's like you, you oh, fool yeah, yourself that you're eating ice cream and chocolate. It's the greatest thing ever. Here you go. I got one for you. I got one. One thing I'd have to eat the rest of my- Summer snow in Tuscaloosa. I have okay. to go every time. If, if you don't know what that is, it's an ice, excuse me, it's a, a snow cone place. But the way they do the ice is better than anywhere I've ever been for a snow cone. <laughs> and the way they put the flavor in is still better than any place I've ever been. I think they should franchise that and they can make a killing. They really could. All right. I mean, it can't be that much overhead. What's your favorite show on TV right now? Because you and I have talked, you, you, you're, you're a, uh, you are a, because you don't get, you work a lot. So when you get home, you're a, uh, what do you call it? You, uh, Binge watch watching veg. things as you go. What, yes, what's, or a veg, or just yeah, chill or veg. out. So, I just finished Winning Time on HBO. I just finished Winning Time. All right, don't. I fell asleep last. last it was last night the last episode, by the way. It was. Yeah. All right, I fell two. asleep. Don't tell me I fell asleep while trying to watch it at like ten thirty last night. So don't tell me I, yeah. I made it about ten minutes through. I mean, it's part of history. unbelievable you know show, it man. It's really good. I kind of like how they did it. Uh, but if I had to say a type, which I am a huge documentary true crime, love true crime. Yep true crime documentaries of what's actually happened and in stories and, and understanding the psyche and how it got to that point. Uh, I think any show that kind of demonstrates and shows a lot of human behavior, I'm all about. You like Ozark stuff. I have not watched that. My brother's right, been we're watching that the interview. We're in the interview. You haven't watched Ozark? I haven't started that one. Everyone has told me I need to watch that one, but I have to oh. kind of do it in segments. Like I have to like, okay, I'm only doing this one. I'm not someone that goes, okay, I'm going to watch this one and this one. And that's all scattered. Now they got to be systematic. You got to be, I'm watching this one. I'm sticking to this one. This is a plan. I'm not starting another one. We're going to finish this one. Or how, or do you really ever finish what you start? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm an not. Ozark guy. So I didn't, I was late to the Ozark party. I did not get on the Ozark until the pandemic when we had nothing to do. All right. So mm-hmm. I started there. But have become loved it. Finished the actually finished it off yesterday too. Uh, last night. Did you like Game of Thrones? Did you ever watch that one? Not a Game of Thrones guy. Okay, and it has um, nothing to do with. I'm sure it's a great show. It's it's anything medieval. Like I have a mm-hmm. tough time watching Braveheart because of the medieval stuff. I, I don't I don't get into the old eating turkey legs and killing people with swords thing. I just not my that's not my cup of tea. Fire breathing like dragons. House of no. Cards. What's that? Did you like House of Cards? House of Cards. Maybe the greatest TV show ever put on TV. Seasons one through like four or five. Strong. Yeah, strong. You know, that's allegedly, strong. allegedly may be or may not be based on a true story. The Clintons just saying. You got to love politics. I mean. Just saying. I mean, some of this stuff is interesting. I've heard. I've heard allegedly. Yeah, I got the uh, Ozark. Good deal. And, I, and by the way, it reminds me. So I went to, when I went to go see the staff at Georgia State. Several weeks ago, mm-hmm. I got to give a shout out to my guy Brian Landis because the linebackers coach he he listens every week, and he busted my balls on Twitter yesterday. So I know he's listening. So after I left there, I went to a one of my buddies in Atlanta. We went to a barbecue joint where um, the brother was killed. That where he was the whole scene about I don't want to spill it for a spill the beans for anybody, but that hadn't been wow. been the brother has a scene at a restaurant where his final scenes, and they actually. Uh, flashback in the last season to that deal that was at that restaurant and I sat at what they call the Ozark booth and so they filmed the whole thing wow. in Atlanta and around Lake Burton and uh, Lake Oconee and all the lakes up there in Georgia is where they filmed that show so it's really good all right wow. now that you're at Oklahoma how many Jordans do you have because I saw you kicking some on Twitter a couple weeks ago I think four or five pairs already you've only been there like six five months Let's go. You're getting a pair a month. <laughs> I think I have four or Golly, five pairs. man. I, we missed the whole loop. I was always Nike, but we got to order Jordans off Nike Elite, but I missed the whole bring Jordans to the to the coach's locker room deal. Yeah, I want to say, well, I know when I got here, I got three pairs, and that's what we wear. I have a, I have a one really good pair of Pegasus as they just got, which I'm a big oh, fan I'm of. Pegasus. Right? Pegasus. I'm a guy. Yeah. Um, we got, I think – I rock this one, rocking that one today. Okay, that's a that's a strong one. The chrome, that's a strong one. That one's a strong one. Yeah, I see. Uh, man. Yeah. You don't tie your shoes. No, nobody taught you how to tie shoes. It's not, I could tie. It's not in right these, now. This is 
this is for working. Why would I sit there and time when I'm, I'm working? I mean, I'll go time if I'm going to go exercise or something, but it's way better just to slip on, slip up. Fair enough. All right. Here's an interesting question. Uh, I'm old as dirt now and you're getting there too. What's the biggest difference you see in recruiting today versus where it was 10 years ago? There's no VHS. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> <There's> no- <laughs> I wish fans knew that. I wish fans knew like the whole, how crazy this is and how much it's changed because recruiting has really just picked up and like, they have no idea. I have no. So for example, you don't get mail anymore. You don't get the DVDs. Like I remember at Oxford and I remember at Alabama, we were getting tons of DVDs that you actually put your highlight on or the VHS right. because even at Alabama, if you sent the VHS, you had to convert it to a DVD. Right. And, and even at my time there, when I just got there, I think we were getting XOs to actually start putting it on there. I remember when I worked at UCF in the recruiting office, we had a library. This was, listen to me, this is 08. This is 08. This is, yes, this is not that yeah. long ago. 13, 14 you had ago. A, you, had, you had a bookshelf full, full of VHSs VHS. or yeah. DVDs, and you had to put all the numbers on it. Little, to, little to stickers the that you had to number them, and then you had to have That's an right. Excel like, It was sheet like a library. Yeah. That's right. That's exactly right. You had to log days. it. I remember the logging of the film. And having someone responsible for that and then us sending the email or, excuse me, the, a lot of times it's a letter back. Thank you. We've received your your thing. If there's an interest in you, someone will be in contact with you. Due to NCAA rules, if you're not a junior, you know, you had to write yeah. your whole disclaimer. Uh, but, I mean, that that's a big piece. People don't realize that that doesn't, that that doesn't exist anymore. We would take – this is how I – w- I remember being at Arkansas State and going right before we go spring recruiting or go, you know, uh, contact period, going by Walmart. And getting buying fifty or sixty or seventy VHS blank VHS tapes. That's right. And then the school would give you a uh, an envelope, padded envelope that had a return already mm-hmm. had a return uh, stamp That's on right. or whatever. And so the you business would go, reply, yeah, yeah. So you would you would put in a blank tape and you'd put it inside the uh, with a with, with a camp brochure that was slick that was the double yep. and you put it inside there and you'd go in you'd see a coach and some of some of the bigger programs would already have they already made tapes for you and they would give you the tapes. Uh, and then some programs would be like, Hey coach, if you'll leave that tape here, I'll dub it. And then I'll put it back right. in the mail for you. And so that's how you that's got right. filmed for like, years. I remember Alabama, we sent the white VHSs. You still had the white VHSs. Yeah. I don't remember if you remember that, but oh, they no, had the I, white VHSs. That was when you knew you had big money. Clemson did the white ones yes. too. With a, Clemson did the white ones too. That's when you knew you had big money because you got your own custom VH. made VHS tape. And it, and when you saw it was a white VHS and only you know it's all black, you're like, whoa, this is different. And then I wow. would I would go in and as soon as, as soon as I would get a tape in, I would pop that plastic piece out so nobody could dub over it. Mm. Mm. So that's Good a skill point. set right there. Skill Good set, point. VHS skill set. But yeah, I don't think people realize that is not that long ago when you look at no. the calendar. When people used to send out the DVDs for you to put – your DVD and your copy on there. I mean, if you remember how people used to have to do a lot of highlights, you had to literally put the VHS tape in, put the other game film on, record that little little piece, take it out, find the next one, yep. record that little piece. Gordon Paul's, baby. I mean, I mean, look, I was at ACA. When was that there? 07, 08? Um, I was doing my internship through UCF, coaching and all that stuff, and we were still driving to exchange tape. And this was VHS or DVD. I mean, how much has Huddle changed everything? Yeah, Huddle's been a huge game changer. And I would say probably the biggest part of a little bit of that recruiting, like you're asking the question, what's changed the most is I think the promotion, the marketing's changed a lot. I mean, this whole day and age of if they're good, they'll find you. No, no, no. You better be out there because I can't, I can't, I don't know what's not available. I don't know what's not already out there. And you have to be able to market that out there. And I think some of the better ones get that information out there quicker and earlier. I mean, for if I was a high school coach and I had a kid playing as a, on varsity as a freshman, you best believe that's getting out there to every Power 5 program in the country because we all know it's the same questions the NFL scouts ask. Hey, is this guy going to be a three-year starter or a four-year starter? Right. Four-year starter is a little bit different. You're like, oh, four-year starter, three-year yeah. starter. Uh, but I think getting that – the accessibility now has totally changed. Social media has totally changed it. Everyone has a profile. If they don't, a lot of their parents are ma- managing those profiles. Um, 
so you can send out contact, so you can uh, send out the questionnaires. I mean, everything is so instantly now. You don't have to send out a VHS or a DVD and wait two weeks or two and a half weeks or never get that thing back. Yeah. You, know, you got the link now. They can just, send, hey, the they can just that, send their film to Quick You and we got them taken care of. There you go. I mean, how easy and is that? I think that? One, of the things, one of the things the kids would have to do a lot better job of, I think positioning your clips is the key, especially initially, because think about it. Throw out just saying it's a film evaluation. Let's just go first impressions. You get one chance to make a first impression. Yep. So your first couple of clips better sell that not you're this quarterback or running back or linebacker. It better sell that you are a football player because that's the sport you're playing. And it better sell that you were physical and you're tough and you're ready to give the strike and you're not taking it. I mean, I think a lot of times a kid realizes how to piece their film together correctly makes all the difference in the world because come on, you sat in the same shoes as I sat in. You're having a lot of times watch that film waiting. To, I don't know. Let's just use a running back. For example, Why? is he ever going to run it? Is he ever going to run up the middle? Is he ever going to pass block? You have is he running ever backs. Catch you have ball? every single touchdown run that they've ever had in their life at the front. And so you watch 45 seconds of one yard touchdown runs. Yeah. And then you, and then they don't realize that leaves how many questions. Yeah. I never saw him catch. I never saw him pass block. I never saw him run in between the middle. Does he Does he have the ability? Does he have vision to hit the hole up the middle? I mean, and I don't think kids realize that because now you're leaving questions. And if you leave questions on that film, well, that's just that much further away from getting the opportunities you want or the invites or the offers because people aren't going to offer what they don't know. And they got to be more certain about it. And that's why they have to be able to check out uh, all those different aspects. But I think really us not having to send out DVDs and VHSs and catalog, all that stuff has really changed the game. Social media has really changed it as well uh, because everything is just instant. It's there right away. And some of the better kids now market themselves as the season goes on. Here's my three game highlights. Here's my six game, my mid season highlights. Here's my season highlights. Now we're entering, now we're entering the, uh, the playoffs. I mean, and then they don't realize that you know some of the better organizations are going to go back and, and watch game film because all the highlight is is a teaser, is a trailer to what I'm expecting the game film to look like. Yep, I no doubt. All right, we'll finish up with this. i got a couple things, but finish up with this. You spent a lot of time on the road. What is the weirdest thing that's ever happened to you while you're on the road? Weirdest thing? Man. I'll tell you this, like animals, you just see it like roadkill and animals, especially where you're recruiting some rural Alabama, rural Georgia. I remember cows. You couldn't go anywhere. It was a cow crossing. crossing. I probably sat there. I probably, and it's not like, what are you going to do? Go bump the cow. I mean, they're just standing there. A cow crossing. Cow crossing. Yeah. I mean, you're like, you're done. Don't expect to make that school on time because, hey, where was this? What are you going to do? Take, God, I forgot where it was. It was, I want to say it was either South Georgia or South Alabama. It was, a it was some crossing. Call it crowd crossing. No lie. And, and I just remember, like, what are you going to do? Take the rental car and go bump the cat? No, you're not. No. You're just, you're just going to wait for you're the cow to wait. do its business. And, 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 and it was not like one cow. Multiple cows. It was like, it was weird because you know you had the pasture. It was one of those things where you got the pasture over here, the street, and then yeah. they got the other pasture. And so it was, it was literally a cow crossing. Um, I think that was one of them. Um, I'll say this, you know, just even at my time at JSU, a lot of times I take the GA on the road. Now, obviously, they can't go into school and all that stuff, but they can drive. But it just it was so much more convenient to to be able to still work and get things processed yeah. and stuff. And then, and then if I came back to the car and there was a player that, hey, we need to watch right away or we need to do something, uh, he could do that while sitting in there. Yeah. Uh, that helped a lot because it just it just created the process so quicker. It does. Um, it's a lot and more, more importantly, doing it that way. Yes. And then while my time at JSU, I was wearing so many different hats. So you're dealing with eligibility and, and guys' graduations and move in and move out and everything else. So you had to be like, hey, all right, okay, let me go put this hat on now. I can't write up a report that the school I just went to, we're, we're dealing with, hey, eligibility. Hey, well, how many classes do you need to have this summer to stay eligible? Oh, okay, summer schedules. Okay, hey, the move in for all the freshmen. Hey, are they still all eligible? Hey, let's talk to admissions now. I mean, you're talking about. Yeah. So you had to. I mean, you had to literally live on your phone. Yep. And 
driving would just take that much time away from it because you'd be living on your phone and having to type. So that's one of the things that I feel is like you can do. It's perfectly legal. Um, I mean, I had to pay for the guy, you know, for another room and food and all that stuff, but it made your job easier because it helps. Yeah, I can't remember. I was trying to decide what the weirdest thing that happened to me. I got a bunch of them. Um, probably two unique ones I could that are short. I really don't have to go into great detail about is I got a guy tried to rob me uh, at a gas station. No um, way. Yeah, right in the middle of downtown Tallahassee. Guy tried to rob me. Ooh. I was down there recruiting. Um, at like eight o'clock on a Wednesday, like not, not late, not super, I mean, just down. I mean, just, he asked for money. I was like, I, you know, I was getting the car and then he goes, no, I don't think you understand. <laughs> and I was like, I better not, my mom hears this. She's gonna be pissed. I got in a car and took hauled ass and I did not, I did not give him my money. I just hauled ass. And <laughs> you should have said, you should have said cash. Where have you been? Yeah, Venmo, well, man. I work hey, at Arkansas I mean, State. I don't Where have are you cash. At now? Yeah. I work at Arkansas State. Yeah, I don't have cash. And if I had any, my wife's got it. Um, and then the, uh, I had a, I had a, uh, I won't say where this was cause they probably gave it away. I was in, I was in, I'll just say I was in Florida. I was in Florida, um, during contact period and was recruiting a kid and went, uh, in the middle of a day to a home visit cause the kid lived with his grandmother. She was 77 years old. So I left the school, went by to see grandma and uh, went in the house and she sat there and the entire time that we were uh, conversating, she was smoking weed, a joint right there in front of me, lit up and just smoked away. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, well, you don't think the kid's going to have a problem when he when he gets to college? And he was a baller. And you're sitting there and you're like, I mean, I was like, well, we probably need to have a conversation when we get back to the office. You know, what are we going to uh, just so y'all know, all right? Just so y'all know if y'all, I mean, this is what happened. You know, that was that was definitely an enlightening and uh, enlightening moment in the recruiting process. 77 years old. And and I like she was uh, just, you know, drinking a Coke. Just no no problem at all. Just lit it up and took off. So, yeah. Man, so I, I would say some of the more experience, the more fun experiences are are the conversations that you have because you know if a kid or a family is interested or not interested. I mean, you, you, well, you really know. Quit. And don't talk, your, don't talk yourself out of it. You, you know. And as much as you want it, I think that's what happens a lot of times. As much as the coach wants him to want it, if there's no willingness and he don't want it, that's, that's, called, it. that's one of that, just, I, I chalked it up to practice recruiting. I was like, I've been doing mm-hmm. this long enough. I don't need to practice recruiting. So, I mean, because, you know, I think that's some of the, the tougher ones when you have those in-home visits and they're like, you just know. You just know. You just know we're not the school. Just know. Hey, before we get you out of here, have you have you tried the Monsters yet? Sugar-free Monsters? Have I, I got tried the Monsters? Yeah. I mean, what type of Monster do you want to try? Okay. We, we got have, the orange, purple. We have, we have Monsters. Green. The monsters. I mean, just, you name the color, we probably have it. Let's go. I, I mean, like it. I only could fit these in my pocket. I don't have enough pockets for all of them. So y'all y'all have the y'all have the uh, cooler in the coach's locker room, huh? Mm, solid. 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 If you go, if you just need an extra pick me up, that rain that mm. you had up there on top, that rain will get you right too. But the really? but look the 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 zero. See, I'm a, I'm a zero ultra guy. Tastes like Fresca for those out there that don't know what it tastes like. Got a little like Fresca. If you like Fresca, it's a little citrusy, but it is. It is on point. the 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 orange there tastes like sun kiss. By the way, it's really good. Mm. So if you're, you know, I used to like that baby blue one. You remember the baby oh, blue one? I do. We don't have that one. The baby, the blue one, that light blue was. Really I know good. exactly which one you're talking about. Call my guy Bob up and see if he'll he may he may take care of you over there and send you send you a little bit send you some some send you some baby blues get you get your mind right. But when you're on the road with coaches that are listening to this on the road recruiting, you just finished up. It's like two thirty three o'clock and you're getting ready to go to practice. Get your mind right. Get you a sugar free. You'll be ready to go. Right. It will. Go. It'll get your mind right. You'll you'll be ready to go for the rest of the day. But brother, I appreciate you, um, you joining us today, man. On. And uh, thank man, you for thinking of me. Yeah, you know what? I mean, I I can't go a day without you. So I figured if I had you on right now, <laughs> I'd just have a great a great day. So because I'm sure you'll call me a little bit later. We can at least start the week off right. We now, start huh? the week off right and get and get it right and uh i'll make sure i hit quota this week with all the calls and facetimes and uh and all the questions and all the all the new quick you recruiting new things that are going to come down the pipe 
Oh yeah, we got because to- later on, <laughs> later on, we'll call you and ask you, hey, we, where are we at with these things? You know, the business call will come. Like, where are we at with these things? Why have we not finished? We'll talk to my programmer. Well, you talk to your programmer. Hey, hey, I'll tell you what. It's been. I've had a. I've had such a blast doing it because I, I feel I'm always, it's like I never left. I'm still recruiting all that stuff, but I just don't care where they go anymore. And it's like, you don't have that pressure of entertaining. I don't have to do photo shoots, which I've told you is my, not my nightmare. I don't have to do the photo shoots, I, but you know, but at the same time I get to help, I get to uh, get, you know, help the kids, you get to help still the schools. Know who all been, the kids are, you know, all yeah. the kids are. And, 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 um, and it's kind of unique, you know. You, you literally know where everybody, what everybody's thinking, and it's it's good to go, man. It's a it's a blast. It's a blessing. Uh, we're slammed again this week. It we got another nine schools this week. So um, let's, it's, go. let's go, let's go, let's go, let's um, go, let's go. So it's it's taken off uh, so fast, and and uh, we're we're staying busy. And while I'm in here recording this podcast, Clay's in there grinding away, so he's probably cussing me right now. So, well, brother, I appreciate you. And you got uh, it. look forward. We'll try to get you back on here again and uh, make sure I got to send you a quick you Peter Millar shirt. We'll get you right. Let's do it. I bet you better get on that one. You better get on. You better take care of your whole team, too. Now you take care of them first. <laughs> we'll do it, brother. Appreciate you. All right.